with another wonderful Russell Roney for me and you. Joining us today, an absolute legend in my book. You've seen oh, the man in VC. Oh, I tell you, I call it like I see it. I know my you shit. Died. You've seen the man in VCW. You've seen him everywhere here, there, in between. You've seen him in RSW, lately in Neo Pro, and we're going to get into that. Wilbur right. Whitlock, how we feeling, my man? Well, I'm feeling good. I got myself a bottle of Blue Note whiskey that I picked up in uh, Tennessee this last week. Uh, you can see there's not a whole lot left of it because it's pretty fucking good. Uh, but, I'm, man, I'm feeling good, Spooky Lou. I'm excited, man. I'm excited for Saturday Night Neo Pro and excited to... Uh, to be on the podcast, just talking and chatting with you, man. Uh, happy to be here. Glad to have you on. This has been uh, something I've been wanting to do for a while, and no better time than the present, because, man, what a stacked card we got coming up Saturday. Neo Pro, Canton, Ohio, is that where it is this to go around? Canton, Ohio, my hometown, man, the Hall of Fame city for all you football folks out there. Okay. Uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame and, uh, and, and Uncle Wilbur's hometown. That's, that's two biggest claim to fame. Hell yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what. Before we get into Saturday's card, let's talk yep. about the first go-round. Talk about the last show. What was some standout points to you, some highlights, some lowlights? What can you tell me about the last Neo Pro show? Well, man, I'll, I'll tell you this. So, you know, I've uh, I've, I've called Canton. Well, I live in East Canton, the same deal. Called Canton, Ohio, my home um, for the last, god dang. About 22 years now, and you know, my entire adult life, I own my home here. My kids go to school here. This is my hometown, and uh, you know, outside of my original company that I came up with and trained, and we never really, there's never really been a good stronghold wrestling company in Canton, Ohio, which is kind of strange because it's not a huge town, but it's a pretty big town, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, there's a good thirst for wrestling, and. You know, without bearing anybody or being mean about it, there's been other promotions that have come and gone and, you know, some here and there. And, you know, there's a thirst for good wrestling. And just, again, without being mean, it just it hasn't been delivered. You know, it hasn't. Right. So the project got started, and we'll, we'll put these guys over. Their uh, names are Jason Maddox and Dan Figueroa. And uh, they both actually were part of a training class that I was, you know, helping train about ooh, 12, 13 years ago. And neither guy really made it, you know, actually as an in-ring worker. But they, they maintained their love for wrestling and everything like that. And they got a hold of me last year basically saying, hey, we're interested in putting together a wrestling promotion. And I took that with a grain of salt. I'm not going to lie. I like these guys. But you hear a lot of times guys that you know, have big ideas and, you know, they're, they're kind of empty dreams. Sure. Well, they uh, they kind of showed me what they were looking at. They showed me the, the setup for the ring and their entrance and what they had planned and these dudes were putting a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of heart and soul into Britain and for just that reason, not as a pet project for them to, you know, get themselves over and tug each other's dicks. It was, a, it was solely to get good wrestling in their hometown as well. And the one thing that they were missing was that connection to the active wrestling world. And that's where I came in because they knew, yeah, they, you know, they were, they trained under me a little bit some many, many years ago, but the whole time since then I've been out on the scene you know, making towns, different states, and, and meeting and, and working with so many dudes. Um, so they know that I had an eye for talent. So that's where they called me in going, hey, we we just don't really know who's out there and who's worth having because it's it's real easy to send a DM. It's real easy to look good on an 8 by 10 Right. Or send a highlight video. Yep. I know the guys that, that can go, the guys that can work, and the guys that would be good fit. So uh, they showed me what they were working on, and I, dude, I dove in head first. I said, I'm here, man let's put together a hell of a product. So we ran the first show April 29th and, uh, you know, we had, we had pretty good pre-sales. I could feel it was going to be a pretty good turnout. And brother, we packed that place to where you could barely get another butt in a chair. It was fantastic. Uh, on that night, I got to team with the uh, franchise, Shane Douglas, who is one of my absolute favorites going back to the ECW era. Same. And we, we beat two, uh, BCW guys, uh, Patrick Hayes and Jimmy Shane in a unsanctioned street fight main event. Good. And Brother, I mean, the energy in that building was, you. if you could capture it in a bottle, you could sell it on the street, man. I'm telling you. It was incredible. The fans were electric all night long uh, into everything we did. And you could just sense there was a real appreciation and a real relief, you know. Because those guys, Dan, Dan and Jason, they, they busted their ass, man. They absolutely busted their ass to get a good product out there. And the boys went out there and busted their ass for them. 
uh, got taken care of, and everybody's excited to get back on for the next show and any show after that. So, uh, you know, coming out of show number one couldn't be a bigger success. Um, but now, now you know, now's the tough part. Now we got to sustain. Now there's a high expectation that's been set in Canton. Uh, and, I mean, I can talk a good game, but I plan on doing everything I can to continue backing that up. Hell, hell yeah. And props on the first show and props – on the identity, already you guys have this feel, this identity to the uh, promotion. Bringing in names like Jake Ely, like franchise Shane Douglas. I could go on all day. We got Saturday Night Special coming to the next show. Uh, what What's some uh, matches you're looking forward to this Saturday? Let's sell this, baby. Man, well, I'll tell you what. You know, I'm teaming up with a young guy named uh, Don Tavio. He's a young guy from Canton, Ohio, and it's a – Fun story, his dad was actually in my training class way back in 2002. Oh, so wow. he was a toddler <laughs> watching me train with his dad. Mm-hmm. And now he's he's a pro himself, and he's got a lot of potential. Well, I took him on as a tag partner uh, to take on a team called Cash Inc. That is uh, out of Mega Championship Wrestling up in Elyria. Highly, highly talented tag team. Um, I think that one is going to be a banger. Those kids are man and just in general that's what i love about this young generation you got a lot of kids out there that are fucking hungry man that are looking that they're looking to come in make an impression show out and uh you got to appreciate that but the match i'm looking forward to the most outside of my own uh well there's two ashton day i know you've seen him at rsw up in parma uh-huh. that dude is a star in the making for sure and he's going up against no love lost here. One of the biggest dickheads I know, Patrick Hayes, oh, the guy who's looking to squash any star he can. So I think that one is going to be an absolute banger. But then we got a uh, it's straight up called the Neo Pro Invitational Showcase because we want to get top young talent from all around and just give them that platform to be in front of our audience and just say, go do what you do. Go, leave in, go make an impression. So we got a fatal four-way. With our boy, the good Pastor CeeLo. Hell yeah. Pop. The, the, the Thunderbird Jake Ely. Hell yeah. Colton Quinn, who's been turning heads everywhere he goes. The future. And, re- and the return of Alex Daniels, who was, uh, I mean, just an incredible prodigy some, you know, seven, eight years ago. He took a nice high, little hiatus from the ring, but he's back. He looks incredible. Um, so that's a four-way where, again, the winner of the match obviously is going to get some eyes, but man, every one of those guys has a chance to go out in front of a new crowd and impress. And and honestly, if I didn't think any one of them had, you know, I think the world of all four of them, that's why they're in this match. Cause I think the fans are in for a treat in that one. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. I shoot. Uh, don't even get me started on Colton Quinn. I've said since day one, that kid's the future. Pastor CeeLo, as soon as he hit VCW, he turned my head. The promos, the entrance, the wrestling, total package. Uh, and, uh, hell, Jake Ely, I was just putting him over earlier. And not familiar with the last name, but I'm sure we will be after Saturday night. So Absolutely. Um, and then a couple more matches. You know, I uh, we, we had some guys come in on our first show. Uh, there was a tag team called Studio 86. Now, most people aren't familiar with them, especially down, you know, in your area, Lou, and they're not that familiar even in uh, in Northeast Ohio because they're they're Michigan based guys. They but they're out of Clash Wrestling in Detroit, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Those guys are an incredible tag team, and they also came in with a guy named Justin Maine, who you know was here in Northeast Ohio a little bit, but again, kind of in that Michigan scene. And they're incredible talent, so they were in on the first show. And when Jason asked me, he said, "Man, we need." Another good tag team for Studio 86. That was when I jumped at him. Like, you, you got to book Marcus and Didi. You got to get them in here. Hell yeah. and, and he said my word was good enough. But I just showed him a couple, just a couple promos. And he's like, oh, these guys are great. I'm like, yeah, these guys are great. And and that's why I'm excited about Neo Pro is, you know, and this is talking with Marcus and Didi, like the Northeast Ohio scene, well, just like any scene, just like Pittsburgh or anything like that. I mean, there's some really, really, really good wrestling, but it is kind of tough to break into, you know? Because, you know, like Mega and AIW, they have their own very successful schools. So they got young guys that they need to give work to. Mm-hmm. You got OCW that has some of their students that they need to get work to. So it's a little bit tough to kind of break into that scene. And I'm thinking with Neo Pro, like, hey, we'll give you a couple of these absolute top guys from Cleveland. We're going to get you some top guys from Michigan. And then, you know, you want to 
one of the, one of the top tag teams from that you know Western PA West Virginia scene. Like here comes Saturday Night Special, and I think they're gonna. I think our crowd out there is gonna eat these guys up. They're gonna they're gonna get a great reaction just like they do everywhere they go. Exactly. Yep. Everywhere they go. I mean, look at their work in VCW. They're not exactly fan favorites, but uh, the record speaks for itself. They're not as successful as they are, uh, you know, without the talent behind it. So I can't wait to see. No. It. See this. Incredible talent, and they know how to. No, they're not popular with the crowd, but the crowd <laughs> reacts when they're out there because they <laughs> want to see them get their blocks knocked off, which is hey, hey, just with conversations with them. I know the feeling. <laughs> but uh, and then another guy we're bringing in for the first time is a guy that is turning heads everywhere, and that's our boy Cowpoke Paul, uh, the leader of the Cowpoke Posse. Now, unfortunately, fortunately, he drew the short straw because I don't know if you've seen. He's oh, yeah. taking on our boy, the Beast Man, in a no disqualification match. And that might be the end of the Cowpo Posse before it gets started in Northeast Ohio. Man, to the <laughs> listeners, to the viewers, this is one you do not want to miss. Uh, no. Recently, I saw these two men in a no ring death match. And I tell you what, Cowpo hung with him. He, uh, he hung in there better than I thought he would, even. So, uh, Cowpo's got a mean streak. Yeah. Capo's got Main Street, man. He can he can scrap. He can get gritty and grimy if he needs to, and uh, he's had a few rounds with Beast Man recently in other promotions, so he's learning the Beast Man ways. So let's get beasty. But Spooky Lou, you know what Beast Man didn't have in those matches? Uh, what's that? He did not have Jexy Black in his corner. Ah, that is a he's game got changer. Jexy Black in his corner at Neo Pro Wrestling, who just somehow, some way. Seems to have control over him. It seems to get him to do anything that she says. So and that I'll tell you, you know, the beast man, the beast man is the beast man, but Jexy is pure evil. So if, if her influence is over the beast man in that match, I mean, Cowpoke's going to have to bring everything he has to the table. I'm, I'm glad you threw that card in there because I saw uh, their work in war, how they're killing yeah. folks in war together. I mean, I, the she, violence level gets up. <laughs> With the Beast Man, is saying something. Yeah, no doubt. Beast Man, oh my goodness. We'll get into some of the VCW here in a little bit, but yeah, that's one yeah. I'm excited to see. I mean, the whole thing's stacked. Uh, we got Jimmy Shane and Shane Douglas going at it again. The, the franchise Shane Douglas, I'll, I'll tell you guys this. This is, uh, this is really cool. You know, a lot of times you get, you know, the legends will come in for your show. They'll do a spot show. They'll they'll come in. They do their signings. They, they might wrestle a match, and it's great for your local crowd. Dude, Shane is, you know, he sees what I saw, and Shane knows a hell of a lot more than I do. He sees what's being built there, and Shane is a member of the roster. He's no, not no. a uh, legend appearance. He's a member of the roster. He came in. We had that. We had an awesome main event. Sent the crowd on happy. Jimmy Shane called him right out. Called him right out and said, you can't beat me in a wrestling match. And he ain't going to call out the franchise Shane Douglas and not get a reaction. So, yeah, you got a one-on-one -on -one match there between Jimmy and, and Shane Douglas. And then the match that stole the show from Neo Pro 1 was a guy you're very familiar with, the guiding light, Matthew Taylor, mm -hmm. taking on the uh, aforementioned Justin Maine. And, again, that was a guy that most folks either haven't seen or haven't seen for a long, long time. And by all accounts, they completely stole the show and went to a 15-minute time limit draw. So they have a uh, no time limit match signed for Revenge on Saturday night. Wow. Stacked. Talk about stacked, man. If I could be there for that one, I would be. I have some other commitments. I'm, go I'm coming up soon enough. I promise. We're going to get you up there, Spooky Lou. You're going to have a hell of a time. And then we'll, uh, we'll go hit the bar and get a burger and a beer afterwards. Hell yeah, I am down. Believe me, I'm down. I've been excited since the first promo start coming out. I believe wholeheartedly in what you guys are doing. And, I mean, the footage speaks for itself. Get on Facebook, get on the socials, and see for yourself. The crowd's eating it up. The performers are performing and delivering. You guys should be damn proud about what you're doing. Let's start back to Shane Douglas. How important is Shane Douglas to a brand new promotion like Neo Pro? Well, he's very important in two different ways. A, you know, if you get that casual fan that's on the, you know, so there's a lot of lapsed fans because, well, hell, millions and millions of people watched wrestling in the late 90s, and it's a fraction of that today. It just is right. what it is. So 
you get that guy who sees the poster, you know, and goes, oh, man, I remember the franchise. And, you know, maybe you can lure that guy back in. And, and I, you know, being honest, it's probably a low percentage of, of the folks out there. But for every, you know, one out of 50 that you get, maybe you get a fan back by having a guy like that come in for a meet and greet for a match. And then you get to see some incredible local talent, maybe find your love for wrestling again. So, you know, it's important to get to the fans, but where it's really important is the locker room. I mean, it is. And, and I've, you know, tried to, and I've taken pride in this, uh, you know, where at the BCW locker rooms or the RSW locker rooms where, man, anybody who wants to talk, like I'll, I do my best to watch every match that I can. And anybody who wants to talk shop and talk wrestling just about themselves, or just the business in general, I'm always there to do it because, you know, I, I owe the business that much. And Shane knows that. And and so I'm saying me, I like doing that. Shane Douglas loves doing that. He loves talking to the young guys. He loves explaining wrestling psychology. He loves explaining the business side of things. And he, because he understands too, without us keeping this ball rolling, well, then, you know, then the convention scene isn't as hot as what it is. And the indie scene isn't as hot as what it is. So he's out there able to make a few bucks. But he also, you know, he loves giving back that knowledge to the boys in the back. You know, he, uh, yeah, I went out of my way to talk to him before my match. Just, I, I wanted to talk to him about his 94 feet with Terry Funk because it was incredible. Oh, yeah. You know, just to let him know, A, I was a fan, but B, you know, where was your motivation for finding this and how far is too far to push? And, and talking, yeah, I got to pick the mind from what he learned from Paul Heyman and things like that. Like, that stuff is invaluable, man. That yeah. stuff is invaluable to be in the locker room with a guy like that that has that much knowledge. And, you know, you get it for free. I mean, well, you get it for free, free money-wise. I mean, I paid my dues to be in the position that I was. But you get that for free, and he'll he'll offer that to anybody. And most of the, the legends, you know, honestly are, are, are fairly similar. There's there's some bad apples for sure, but most of those veterans like a Shane Douglas, man, they're happy to be there. They're happy to be in the locker rooms. They're happy to share their knowledge. And, you know, that sort of thing is invaluable. It really is. Yeah. And uh, the, 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 to the listeners that – aren't as familiar with Shane Douglas. We're talking, this man was trained by Dominic Danucci, same guy that trained Mick Foley. Then WCW, he's on TV, ECW for the revolution. WWE, while WWE's hot for a quick minute, the guy's been everywhere. He's given way more than he's taken, I promise you that. Uh, man. On top of all that, you know, for the historians out there, Shane Douglas was part of a moment that completely revolutionized the business when he had the NWA title, mm-hmm. you know, in, 90, in 93 or 94. I think was- but I think it was 93. But, you know, the NWA was pretty much a dead brand at the time. And he threw that sucker down to the ground and named it the ECW, the Extreme Championship Wrestling title. And, like, everything you know about – attitude era and nitro era and everything like that all that sort of you know pg-13 to rated r sort of wrestling that we all loved that inspired so much that kind of was the firework that got it all started with shane yeah. douglas right so i mean he's invaluable to wrestling history in a sense for sure and you talk about a guy that went out there and cut a promo and spoke his mind we would we may not have cm punk pipe bombs without shane douglas cut the fucking music and then trashing Ric Flair and WWE or whatever was on his mind, man. Like, believe me, 1998, I was a Shane Douglas head. Uh, I I recently just lost the shirt, but I had it from 98 until just a couple years ago and always rocked that. Believe me. That's a hell of a run. That's a hell of a run. Uh, No, I bought ECW shirts. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I, uh, I'll tell you. So, There'll probably be footage. I know we're going to get a DVD and a stream release soon, but at the end of the night, and I've seen Shane do this before where he uh, basically puts over Candido and Bam Bam and talks about the triple threat and what it meant and everything like that. And uh, I'm standing in the ring with him, and it's not lost on me because, yeah, 98, I would have been you know, 13, 14 years old. And I would, I fantasy booked myself, you know, as a teenager, like, oh, man, I'm in, you know, in the triple threat with the franchise. Uh-huh. And so he, uh, he mentions Bam Bam's name, and I don't know. I, I ain't never done a cartwheel in my entire life, and I cut a fucking perfect-looking cartwheel in the middle of the ring. I'm just, <laughs> just geeked to be there, man, and, like, you know, with this dude who not only worked with and teamed with, but he meant so much to a Candido and a Bam Bam. Like, you know, his influence travels a long, long way, and it continues to travel now, and that's why I think it's great. 
if anybody's able to uh, get the chance on Saturday night to come out and see him, he'll be out there early. He'll be out there signing everything. Talk. He'll not. He'll take your selfies and everything like that, but he'll talk to you for a minute or two as long as you know he's allotted. So worth every penny for your admission uh, just to hang out with him for a minute or two, guaranteed. No doubt. No doubt. One last thing on Shane Douglas, then I'll try to move on. But I'm such a mark for the dude. Back in my day, I'm same age as you. Uh, back in 98, I was around 14, and uh, I was going to ECW shows at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center in Pittsburgh. And everywhere mm-hmm. else Shane went, he was hated. But in Pittsburgh, he was the hometown hero. Oh, Pittsburgh man. was his jam, man. Oh, man. <laughs> and I got to see him. I-, I got to see him numerous times there. But the one that really sticks out to me, a half-hour banger with Masato Tanaka. Holy shit. Which is such a styles clash on paper, mm-hmm. but then but Shane was such a pro. Like he was, he was, he was so good. I remember uh, having the Cyber Slam '99 DVD, okay, which you know Scorpio versus RVD, and it's like, oh god, I gotta see that. And uh-huh. it had, um, what was it Taka versus? I know Taka was on the card against I think somebody. It was super crazy, maybe. Might have been yeah, Taka and Super Crazy. Where you're like, mm-hmm. fuck yeah. And then you kind of get to the semi-main, and it's Shane Douglas versus Just Incredible. Uh huh. So you see all this stuff before with all the you know, suit quote unquote super indies where you're you know hell, you know so now and then towards the end of the card was Shane Douglas versus Just Incredible, and you're thinking you know okay yeah this this should be good no it was fucking great it's yep. fucking great Shane can bring out the best in anybody that in that era especially and uh, so yeah for him to be a part of Neo Pro I'm extremely grateful. Uh, well worth the price of admission to come in, uh, get in there, talk to him for a minute or two, because he's an incredibly giving dude to the fans and to the boys in the back. Yeah, couldn't couldn't be more lucky to have a guy like that being a regular member of our show. Hell yeah, hell yeah! I'm just happy to have somebody on here that appreciates him like I do, because I get these young bucks on here. I'm not saying they don't appreciate him, but they didn't grow up and see the greatness we did. We we were lucky. The time frame we grew no. up in, we were damn lucky. Oh, absolutely. You were talking about Cyber Slam. Hell, I automatically think back to House Party, the event before that at the arena, <laughs> the rematch between him and Taz. That was a war. <laughs> Yeah, and what a great feud that was. Oh, you know, yeah. What a great feud that was. Like, that's, they, you know, ECW, you know, we, we had rose-colored lenses. You know, I, I know we do, looking back on it, because you can want, go back and watch some of the stuff and go, nah, that wasn't as good as I remembered. But okay. some of the storytelling they had was mm-hmm. very, very good. Their, their top-tier storylines, their main event storylines were always great. You know, uh, yeah, that feud between Taz and Shane Douglas was always great. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Shane brought that heat, man. Shane, you know, again, even a lot of their other top bad guys, they still kind of like RVD was a heel for most of the run, but they still loved him because he was incredible. But Shane right. was a bad guy. They yeah. hated Shane, except for Pittsburgh, as you mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. But, again, uh, we, yeah, you talk about the rose-colored uh, glasses. I mean, they were catering to our demographic back then, so. We were living it by there goodness. Was, there was there was a cat fight or two every show, huh? No, oh, or two, yeah. <laughs> Beyond that, too. If the power goes down, then we're sending Kimono to strip at the top of the arena, you know. So whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's dip into you. Let's quit putting over Shane Douglas and let's put over Wilbur <laughs> Whitlock a little bit. What? Whit- uh, I, like I say, me and you's in the same age range, and you talked about a little bit. But what made you decide to get into this game and start training and everything? You know, man, I, honestly, I've, I've loved wrestling as far back as I can remember. My absolute earliest memories was watching WrestleMania four at my dad's buddy's house, because that's what you would do back then. You'd go to, you know, some else because pay-per-views were expensive as hell back then. So mm-hmm. uh, I remember watching WrestleMania 4 and watching the Macho Man beat the Million Dollar Man, and I just, I was always hooked. Every time I went to the grocery store, there'd be, we, we had a little boat on the grocery store, they had the little racks of the videotapes, you know, and like, there was like, there was a Glow Wrestling, <laughs> which I got, mm-hmm. and there was like Survivor mm-hmm. Series 87, and uh, like WrestleMania 3 and WrestleMania 4, and basically every time we went in there, you know, my granny would um, I ran every videotape I could, and then I got to the point where I'd, I'd watch anything I could. Saturday night's main event, you know, uh, I'd stay up Saturday night till 11.30, and if Saturday Night Live came on, then shit, I'd go to bed. 
Um, and then later, you know, watch all the WCW too. Watch the pro, watch the main event, watch Saturday night. So I just watched everything I could. And I don't know, I never really had any any other ambition of anything I wanted to do uh, in life besides become a pro wrestler. So, uh, you know, we did the, we didn't even do the backyard stuff growing up. We did, uh, we had a place called Al's Gymnastics. It was a gymnastics place that we would, we would book and we would rent and wrestle on the tumbling mats and shit like that. Oh, and, okay. And cut some moonsaults off of the uneven bars and, and all <laughs> that stuff. <laughs> So we had a couple buddies in high school do that, and um, one of those guys found the wrestling school for me. Um, well, not for me; he found it for himself. And he he kind of did the. I don't think anybody else would take it seriously, but I think you would. And so uh, he got me into my uh, training, which was with uh, my trainer was a guy named Kevin Ballou. He went by Shasta, um, and he. Born and raised Georgia native. Um, he showed me some old tapes from like 2000 of him and NWA Wildside working with AJ, AJ Styles, you know. Okay. And he knew, uh, he, uh, he knew both Brian's, Brian James and Brian Lawler. Like that whole, that whole sort of uh, mid-Atlantic area, like he was wrestling down there quite a bit. But uh, he opened up a school up this way um, in Massillon, Ohio. And, uh, you know, I got into the business from there. Wow! Hell yeah! Okay, so, and 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 to make it clear to the listeners, it wasn't easy to find a school back then. For this guy to find you a school, no that was luck. Cor- correct. So I started training in the summer of two thousand and two. So for any of the young folks out there, you won't even know what the hell we're talking about here. But you know, the internet wasn't in its infancy, but it wasn't like you could you couldn't Google search wrestling schools near me at that point. Right. Um, you know, and even social media didn't exist at that point. MySpace would come along a few years later, but it wasn't it wasn't the phenomenon that it is now or even was ten years ago. So no, it wasn't that easy to find a school. And like I knew of the independence from like uh, the Savoldis and stuff there deal because I grew up in uh, York, Pennsylvania. Okay. So they ran IWCCW out there. And then it being out here, like I'd heard of Cleveland All Pro Wrestling, you know, I'd pick up the PWIs and stuff, and I'd look and I'd see, and you know, you'd see some guys that you know in the PWI five hundred that you know maybe would come around, but like even then, it was maybe three or four independent promotions that I'd even heard of at that point, two thousand and two. So, yeah, they and and it just wasn't what it is today, where it seems like there's one, you know, one or two in every town. Um, it, it wasn't easy to find a training school and to find. Uh, in any promotion to work for. So, um, you know, I was fortunate and and a little unfortunate because uh, fortunately where for Shasta training me, we had work all the time. We would do bar shows or we do like two bar shows a month and usually like one or two house shows a month. So there'd be four bookings a month Mm -hmm. with just as many promotion. And again, think back to say 2002, you know, TNA was just starting, and I, you know, Ring of Honor was just starting, but even then I hadn't really heard of them. Mm-hmm. But I grew up on WCW, WWF, ECW, so I'm thinking wrestling for MCW was the promotion. And I'm like, well, this is where I wrestle. This is All right, Cash Inc. Seen that little promo you sent, that little challenge? Let me tell you guys, if you guys want to come into Neo Pro, you want to take on me, all you got to do is ask. But you see, in your little challenge, you made a few mistakes along the way. You see, number one, you said you were going to kick my ass. I got to tell you, boys, I've never had my ass kicked by a Gavin, by a Skyler, by a Ken with two ends, and I don't plan on starting that now. Number two, you badmouthed me for winning the Pile Driver Podcast Wrestler of the Week, and therefore you badmouth my people. My hometown, Canton, Ohio. And I'm going to tell you, that doesn't sit real well with me. And mistake number three, you gave me the option to pick anybody, anywhere, to be my partner to take you guys on. I know guys East Coast, West Coast, North and South that would love to come into Neo Pro and slap you fools around. But then I thought, why waste the miles? Because I got a guy right here in town that would really love to take you two on. Dontavia, how we doing, kid? What's up? Hey, Cash Inc., the 17th. Put your money where your mouth is, boys. We're coming. See you there. 
Uh, well, Spooky Lou, hey, man, we're trying. Bless, <laughs> bless our hearts if you're in your internet and the storm system out there, we're trying. But we'll take this home for now, man, and just thank you for having me on. Thank you for supporting everything you do, uh, all the work you put in. I, I was excited to be on here. Look forward to talking to you again very, very soon. But uh, for anybody who's listening, man, please, at the very least, give Neo Pro a like and a follow on all your socials. And uh, I'll offer you this. If, if anybody reaches out to me from you know your area, from West Virginia or Western PA or anything like that, that makes that trip to Canton, Ohio, you let me know that you did it, and I'll make sure uh, we take care of you. We'll get you something signed, or hell, maybe I'll have a, a, a sip, of my, uh, sip of my stash or something out in the parking lot with you. Hell yeah. And I've been Can't saying it. I've been saying it from day one on this show. The Ohio scene is the scene to watch right now. Thank you for what you're contributing to that scene. You're signing the right ones. You're promoting the right ones, booking the right ones. So thank you for what you're doing. And we will get you on here proper to hear the Wilbur Whitlock story whenever it's on you, my man. Whenever you have the time, if I got to get up in the middle of the night and record <laughs> it with one cigarette, I'll be happy to because I at least owe you that much after this fucking fiasco. No, not a problem. I'm looking forward to it. Don't sell your scene short y'all are doing some great things down your way too, man. I'm happy to be a part of that scene as well. But, for sure. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll get some good internet, some good weather, and we'll, we'll finish this up some other time, Spooky Lou. All right. I thank you to the listeners. It'll be better next time. It's not Wilbur's fault. <laughs> By God, he was trying, and he was giving us some knowledge. But till then, till we meet again, treat each other fairly, love each other. You know how we are. I'm frustrated. I'm Spooky Lou for Wilbur Wetlock. Enjoy your life. All right, wrestling fans, I am so excited to tell you all about the next big Neo Pro Wrestling show. And hey, I'm so fucking Wilbur. Have, 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 I'm busy, oh, but will be. Good seeing you guys as always. Danny, Marcus, how we doing? What, what can I, what can I help you with? It? So we hear you know a guy. I know lots of guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Called Neo Pro. That, we did hear that. I was about to talk this about it right, right, right now. Yes, yeah, so this is good timing. What, what do you want to know? So, uh, these are our opinions. As uh, I was actually about to just say, we have some big time matchups Studio 86 versus the Saturday Night Special, man. Studio 69 versus the Saturday that's, Night that's Special. Not their name, but it's not. Damn, uh, baby. Not what did we but, do to get like rewarded like that? But I'm glad you see it that way. Yeah. But, but I was about to shoot the scrum. Is there anything you want me to tell them? Well, it's, I heard that they said that they're the best tag team in the Midwest. That's Yeah, that's what they've been saying. Well, the only reason that could possibly be true is because we haven't really been around the Midwest that much. Yeah. So you want me to tell them that? I think you should. I can tell them you that. You might be the best until we show up. I can, I can tell them that. You got anything for them? Boys, bring your game faces. Come coming to the party. You know, the camera's on the whole time. I don't have to tell them anything. You understand that, right? Yeah, that camera.